This is as it happens. I'm Mkulego Unjan Mounjeslengwen, IFP MP. Tonight I'm your presenter. And now I'd like to introduce you to my special guest this evening, the Deputy Minister of Communications, Honorable Pinky Kekana. Good evening, Deputy Minister. Good evening, Honorable Songa, and to the listeners and viewers. Well, Deputy Minister, let's cut to the chase. We all know that South Africa, amongst other things, has the highest, um, one of the highest rather, rates of data. And this economically is not viable. Young people who desperately need jobs are unable to explore and surf the net for the job opportunities. It has an impact which is negative on small businesses. So what is government actually doing to address this pandemic and human rights violation, as far as I'm concerned, of expensive data? Look, let's start first uh, by saying, one, government has done very well in ensuring that the, the ICT sector rollout in as far as infrastructure is concerned is done. But secondly, we have created an enabling environment for business to thrive in the ICT sector, but also that must not happen at the expense of the viewer. And what we have now done uh, on the data must fall issue, ICASA then came out with a, the end user service charter, yes. where they looked into the whole sector and the call that you are making that when is data falling? And through this process, data has started to fall. Look what the charter does. One, they, they look at the depletion, um, the, the data depletion. There are no longer surprises to the consumer. Once you buy your 29 rand a time and you deploy 10 rand, and your, your 20 year But your Deputy Minister, that's where exactly lies in the problem. You are managing the use of data, not managing the cost of data. No. It's, statistics show us that South Africa's rate and cost of data is at about 127 to more than above the global average. So that's why I'm saying then, what no. Ikasa has said in the report coming um, in, 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 June. Aug in, June in June and August, does not speak to falling of data. What will be effected on the 8th of June is to say you've got 50%, you have used 80%, and the, it remains expensive. Don't preempt what the investigation is doing. Firstly, we looked into what can be done in the meantime. And that's why the charter came in to but make sure that initially in the meantime, listen, is not addressing no, the cost of data. Initially, the, which is the service provider, the or, no, listen to this. Service uh, 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 industry was accessing your data, whether uh, you, you gave them permission or not. Now, what ICASA has done is to make sure through the charter that no one goes into my data without my consent. But that Which data that achieving. we are buying, then you are not taken about, by surprise. But the data you are speaking about, I still have to buy at a high cost. Let me put it to you this way, Deputy, and why this Until is fundamental. Until we get the investigation done. What are you investigating when we all know the realities that are out there? You, you are investigating something which is already no, we there. Want to, we, but, we are doing but, the data marketing inquiry no, no, no. to check whether what, inv no. uh, what consumers are getting now is competitive Deputy and Minister, that it is not a we are, we, are, we are part of BRICS and other global ins institutions. We are, the president of this country wants 100 billion rands of investment. And Expensive data is not a conducive and enabling environment for businesses to operate and thus to create jobs. So the implications of expensive data are not just about the people buying the data, but about the prospects of the 9 million other people who do not have jobs and want jobs. The question remains, what is taking so long? Why are you continuously investigating something whose findings are already there? The studies are there. We are, I mean, maybe I, will, I should read um, some of the Look, you are, you, I want us to have a scientific research that has been done so that whatever we're doing, we're looking at the sp South African specific situation. Right, let, and I think you, you need to give me time. And we need to look at whether there's fair competition amongst uh, service providers, that's one, but also to assess whether what our people are getting is it value for money or are they charged more? And until we arrive at that, we will not then be saying uh, data, uh, 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 data is more expensive to our people or okay. we are, no, we are no, being... Fine. Speaking about a scientific study, um, one of the studies which came up from Ramp Index tells us that between quarter one of 2016 and quarter two of 2017, South African data has been on continuously on the increase. 
Whereas you look at other countries on the African continent, we speak about a free trade area as it is, yes. but on the continent we're not faring very favorably. Countries like Egypt, Tanzania, Ghana, Nigeria, and Kenya are doing far better than us. They are going to be best placed to attract international investment than us. Maybe the question then becomes, is the government actually scared of these big companies? We are not scared. Then why aren't you taking them on behalf of the people? No, no. One of the things, I, and I don't want us to compare apples and tomatoes. If you look at the other populations, whether Nigeria or, or Egypt, and you look at our own uh, uh, situation, the population differs. The input cost on how infrastructure was rolled out can also differ. That is why when we want to look into these things, we want to look at a totality of issues to say, are we getting the a raw deal? Young it. people, That's what I'm young saying. people in but this two, country went on to the social media under the hashtag data must fall. Agreed. Over two and that's years why, ago. That's what and brought this investigation. So now that, and that's, that's what brought the that problem. intervention. Must people protest before this government actually does something? Not really. Must we r r hide under the guise of hashtags? Fears must fall is a point in case. Had students not protested, the knee-jerk reaction of fears must fall would not have arisen. The the question is, the evidence is there, Deputy Minister. It's not as if this is something new. What are you investigating? I put it to you that it's either the government is under the capture of these companies no or you are scared of them no because if Telcom can do it, why can't the other companies do it? We don't want to do a thumbs up. And that's why we want that. And the but, Competition Commission is also... But there's no thumbs up. That's I can, this Two, is, this is, also this saying, is a study no, telling you no, that's scientific agreed. evidence. No. That's scientific evidence. That's scientific evidence. Agreed. That's a, that, so agreed. what more do you want? We want to look at our own South African situation. But this and is the South African the current, situation. No, no. We want to look at our own, how we have deployed infrastructure and how best... But you've not fared well in the road of infrastructure either. The, the current conference that, uh, that is taking place in, in Devon as we speak, that is also looking Another at talk IT. Shop. No, it's not a talk shop. It's looking at the, the, whether we are ready to deploy, to, ready to lower cost. expand our infrastructure on 5G. Minister. What we are also saying there, we want to see the speed at which when people download and do all those things, data is reduced. Because the longer you take to download, the more data it right. is on you. So ben, government is not folding it up. We scenario, are looking at these things, wanting to expand infrastructure so that may our people... May I paint this scenario for you? Poor people in this country are bearing the brutal brunt of your policies. And we are pro-poor, by the way. Yes, fair enough, if you, if you as, say as, so. As, as that increase... Government. Fuel levy hike, that expensive is, data. You know what the Treasury and, 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 and unions and everybody are meeting to look into how we mitigate on those things. So you can't bring no, it here. The, No, we no, no. All I'm, all, 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 I'm, all I'm saying to you is mm. when it comes to pro-poor issues, you've not done well. You almost, co you almost collapsed. Government. You almost no, collapsed no. the Sasa. We uh, are payments. a caring government, and All right. from where we come you from. You know, in speaking I'm about Sasa, I'm reminded of the fact that these very big companies that you say you're not scared of were deducting airtime from um, Sasa beneficiaries. Why that are you afraid to? T why are you afraid to take on Vodacom, MTN, Celsi? Why? But we what is it that they not. have? On, we have but, to have. You know, if, if there's it, one institution in South Africa that was able to name and shame, is the Competition Commission. And even on this matter, they are together with, with, with um, ICASA Minister, in Minister, dealing with this um, matter. I, I'm not so convinced, I am not, but we will come back to this matter no, just it's, now. Um, this is because I, there's a caller on the line um, who would want to... Um, this is as it happens, and still with me is the... Deputy Minister of Communications is speaking Kekana, and we are now taking your calls on 011-759-6340. You can tweet me at Mkule or at ENCA. And the first caller is Solomzi from Wamhlang. Thank you, Solomzi, and good evening. Welcome to the show. Good evening, Mkule. It's Solomzi. Um, my question to you is whether, why, is, why do you think it is that these political killings, or so they say, um, are happening with relative impunity. Do you think perhaps our intelligence agencies are failing us? 
Well, amongst other things, the intelligence agencies have failed us, and we've pointed this out before. But let's call a spade a spade. The corruption which is currently finding room and expression at local government is precisely the reason why we have um, these killings. People want money. Money which does not belong to them, money which belongs to the people. And we are urging the law enforcement agencies, particularly the police, to make sure that they catch these killers so that we can begin to curb the scourge of violence. It's unacceptable, and the fact that um, people are not being caught is escalating it, because in the absence of consequences, in the absence of um, a justice process which comes to logical conclusion, we continue to aid and abate this violence. That's the bottom line, so that this can end. David, good evening. Welcome to the show. Yeah, welcome to the show. <coughs> can I use um, Kulao speaking? Um, yes, I'm listening, David. How are you? Yeah, I, mm, I just want to, to find out from you because you are saying you are a, a, a chairman of a a youth brigade in Qatar, a freedom part youth brigade, but <clears throat> we don't see you in the political spectrum of promoting the youth. It seems as if you are in the in Qatar, part, which is led by Mr. Boutelli, but yeah, I, I, we don't see the youth brigade it's playing a role. Mm -hmm. Then my second question: What what is your take on the on the on the budget of the of the King's team? Well, thank you very much um, for your questions. Well, first of all, I'm not sure where you're looking. Um, it's, it's a matter of whether the glass is half full or half empty, um, if you don't see us. But I'll put the challenge to you. Send me your details on Twitter. Let's talk as young people, and I will make it a point to be where you are. Insofar as the budget of His Majesty the King is concerned, well, that's the prerogative of the legislature and the MEC for Finance, and they will make an appropriation. And I think that it is warranted. And because the King is rolling out very important projects in the province of KwaZulu Natal, the circumcision of of men. We've just reached the one million mark in the, as part of the efforts to deal with the prevalence and spreading of HIV and AIDS. Um, and there are lots of things that are being done with that budget. So um, the budget actually works in favor of the people and the king continues to be the father of the nation. And then, and Wiseman, good evening from Alex. Um, yeah, Wiseman Smelane Lona. I want to check in regards to why is IFP not taking credit, you know, on the distribution of antiretroviral drugs? Because we know now that uh, it is IFP that forced ANC government, you know, to like distribute uh, uh, those drugs, you know, to the sick people, you know. Why is IFP then not taking credit on that? Why are we not telling the world that we are the ones who like initiated this program? Thank you. Thank you much. Well, we're not in the business of gloating as the IFP, we're in the business of getting the job done. But you do remind me of a very important issue that happened that, in fact, in Guazulu Natal, the then MEC for Health, Dr. Zulim Kize, refused point blank to roll out a ARVs. It was incumbent of then Premier, the late Dr. LPH M. Umchali, who had to take his own MEC um, of health to the Constitutional Court, which forced then the MEC, then Mkize, to roll out um, um, ARVs. So quite frankly, uh, the IFP did do well there, um, and we are happy that lives were saved during the dark time of um, denialism which took place under President Mpegi. It was unfortunate that life was lost then, but I think we can be proud of the strides that we have made, and yes, you can trace the genesis of this um, to the IFP. Next on the line is Julius. Um, to the Deputy Minister. Julius, good evening and welcome. Uh, good evening. Uh, my question is to Northern, uh, with regards to the IFP, which has a stronghold in Northern KZN, why is it that we continue to, fa to find and even face the kind of disastrous consequences that take place in that region? What makes the IFP think or even believe that they have within them the capacity to run South Africa. If you fail to, to provide for such a small region in South Africa with, with such a significant population, year on year we see how ch children are killed in drownings and all these disasters. What makes you think that you can run an entire country? Well, I would like to believe, Julius, that the IFP is doing very well where it's governing, um, and the people are quite happy with that. I think our victories in by-elections are an indication of people who have got full confidence um, in the IFP. We've just taken an award from the ANC last week in Mtuba Tuba, and we'll continue doing so. We are enjoying the full support of the people. Where we govern, we are serving the people with integrity, and we are rolling out programs, and our mayors are 
delivering quite well and they are reporting monthly to us and we are quite satisfied with that. I would like to believe that of course no government can say it has done enough but if you look at our track record as the IFP when we were government in Guadalupe Natal, you are my witness that we have done much better than anybody else could have done and we have done more than people thought we would uh, not do. So I would like to believe uh, that give us time, give us your vote in 2019, and the miracles you see where we govern will be spread out to the whole of um, South Africa. And our closing question from Isaac, I mean, Bakersdale goes to the Deputy Minister. Yeah, good, good, good. Can I speak with uh, Mr. Kuleka Mkango? Uh, speaking, Isaac, I thought your question was to the Deputy Minister. Okay. Ah, uh, now, cut as a routine IFP, calling a cocona, Mobaguing, Ombalezo, Guti. We are born to go to IFP, Filibe Corner, Yonk in Dao, and in Gizim Africa. And well, that is as it happens. And thank you very much to my special guest, the Deputy Minister of Communications. Regrettably, we did not have enough time. And to you, the viewers at home, thank you very much for watching. And until next time, from Mim Kulewotlengwa, good night.